thousands of us were sent to uh, orphanages, thousands were ripped from our mothers. They quote said it would be better because we were black to go to a different climate or, you know, because of us being mixed race, it would be hard for us to acclimate ourselves. And some of us went to these children's homes where we were fucked over sexually, physically, emotionally. Who give a fuck about us then? I'm so grateful that my parents adopted us and took us out of that hell hole and brought us to America. My name is Rudy Richardson. I was born in Germany in a woman's prison. My mother, she was a prostitute. She got busted several times. And that's where I was born, in prison. I was immediately sent to a children's home where I stayed until approximately three years old. And I remember this pretty light-skinned lady coming in and this pretty light-skinned lady would be my mother who adopted me. Boom. That's when life began for me. So I'm with my new family. They adopted a young child before me, uh, my sister. And so when I went to the house, it was a new family, you know, and uh, I can remember, you know, trying to adjust. I mean, coming out of this children's home, which is like a dark black cave to this, you know, Chuck Berry and all this music and bingo and toys and candy and bikes. You know, I'm like, damn, man, this is just something else. Those years in America, they were crazy times. I can remember learning how to dance. That's when I really got into dancing. I was really good. My mom taught me how to do the twist, the cha-cha. <laughs> We'd go to uh, bingo and they'd have dance contests and I'd win every one of them. I mean, I was one hell of a dancer, you know. Just having a good time until my dad has to go back to Germany and he leaves us with our mom. Things started getting weird. Looking back, my mom would go through depression. She had boyfriends. She would uh, leave us at the house and she would go out at night to bingo. And me and my sister were scared as hell. So things really get out of hand with my mom. So she decides she's gonna go back to Germany where our dad was and stay there to the remaining of his tour. So we went back to Germany and we lived the perfect family for three years. We leave in 1966. We go to San Pedro, and that's when shit starts unraveling. And I was in the seventh grade, two o'clock in the morning, I'll never forget. My sister said, Rudy, something's wrong. Let's see what's going on in the bathroom. My mother, she was on something, aside from the fall, you know, something, something was not right here. And so, you know, we picked her up and we put her back to bed. And that's when my mother's addiction just, you know, went, caught on like wild fucking fire. Psychonol, phenobarbital, Librium, you name it. She'd go to different doctors and get these prescriptions and she would be so drugged up on these downers to be slurring, drooling. Oh, it was just such a horrible sight. 
back then, we don't know what the fuck's going on. Only thing we know is we're keeping this shit in the fucking family and we're fucking covering this shit up. My dad, he didn't know what to do, so he got an extra job. And it got to a point where my dad left us. He left my mom a note saying that I had enough. And when that happened, my mom just fucking just totally gave up. So I had to become the adult, take care of my mom, take care of my sister, make sure the house is in order, school, this and that. It was just fucked up. We'd come sometimes and see our mom sprout out on the floor. I can't even describe it. And then our mom would start blaming us for the reason why she was getting high. And then, you know, she would get periods of sobriety and acting like nothing happened. Just imagine your mom being dead and alive at the same time, and you trying to make sure that she stays alive. This is horrible. So when my dad came back a year later, I knew in my heart, you know, that my dad was going to make it all right. Somehow, somehow we were going to get through this. But it never happened. I'm like in the ninth grade. I feel lost, you know. I'm trying to find out who I am until I started smoking marijuana. And once I started smoking marijuana, my addiction started right then. The only thing I can say is just that it took me out of my emotional self. Myself back then was insecure, shame-based. So I, I smoked the weed and all that goes away in a matter of seconds. I could feel all the, those negative emotions just, whew, just go. And I never felt like that before. So I'm running away from home, not giving a fuck. Take this guy's car, a uh, friend of mine's car. He said I could sleep in it overnight. I start the car, go down the street. Police lights come on. I got busted for joy riding. And I think the pivotal moment for my life was when my parents told me I was adopted in front of the probation officer prior to going to court. That's when she said, oh, and by the way, we feel it would be best that he would join the army. The officer said, yeah, if you join the army, we'll squash the case. In other words, everything will be, everything will be wiped clean. Just join the army. All of this will be over. But I really didn't like the army. I didn't like anything about it. The memory started to surface. I'm lying in my bed. Then all of a sudden I see the smoky dark shadow. I feel gagged and suffocated. Also, I feel this thing is molesting me at the same goddamn time. I was aroused, but gasping for air and terrified at the same goddamn time. I just wanted to make it through the army, you know, because it was getting time to leave. And I miraculously finished the army. I get an honorable discharge. And I go see Linda and Kira, my daughter, for the first time in Massachusetts. That's when I get the federal job for the federal government under the Veterans Readjustment Appointment. So I get promoted as an apprentice painter. Two weeks later, I get a memorandum from the personnel office saying, Mr. Richardson, you need to show proof of your citizenship immediately. I told them that the recruiter said that I'd automatically be a citizen 
once I got an honorable discharge out of the Army. And they said, no, no, that's not that's how it's done. That really affected me very deeply. To be terminated on a promise that was given to me by the Army that I was automatically a citizen was just, I just felt betrayed, really. And my parents didn't fucking help either. I just so wanted to be a part of something. Now, now you're saying that I'm not even, I'm not even a part of this country? Jesus Christ.